What is up down and sideways? You absolutely fantastic individuals. Welcome back to League Unlike. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. I had a little bit of a mini hiatus. No, we weren't just running away from 100 Thieves games. Although now, in hindsight, it would have been a good time to go hide under a rock if you're an LCS fan. Yep, it was a classic LCS stinker when you needed them the most. When they had to deliver, when all the chips were on the table, the LCS comes through with a big old goose egg against PSG. 100 Thieves run out of steam at this tournament. Never got steam going, uh, really, is the reality here. Now, okay, if you want to play the Copia Mangle, you say they should have beat R7 if they beat R7. You're playing potentially pain in that loser's bracket. And you probably still feel like 100 Thieves beats pain in a best of three. But that's what happens when you lose to R7. Yes, that is what happens when you lose to R7. Again, we talk about these type of things. You're not necessarily eliminated at that point. Doesn't mean you are free from the consequences of said performance and what comes through in that result. The other thing is when you look at the performance in that series against PSG, you know, whether that plays into what the, you know, the expectation and what they felt was that monster on the other side of the rift in PSG, and whether that's different if it is what is expected to be pain gaming in that situ other type of situation that you would have to try and get your way through this playing event. And that would be the match if you would have had. I, the way that they played and the confidence issues that we continued to see for this 100 Thieves roster, I don't even know if they would have gotten by a pain game. I mean, they all it took was one bonehead team fight around Rift Herald in game one against PSG. And you knew this series is over. They, they looked so mentally not there he had guys flashing backwards eventually throughout this uh series so they had no chance against psg i don't think most people gave them a chance when you knew it was going to be them even if it was mdk 100 of these were not up to the level that i think people wanted and this is even with the team that we knew there was a significant gap from the top two teams in the lcs feel like expectations were still relatively low for them and still i think we're left feeling disappointed I think a lot of people bought into the the hype and the excitement of that cloud nine series that upset against the team that everyone expected to not only win that series but be a contender to be someone that you can think about and plot and all these type of things pay attention to at this international event gets replaced with this 100 thieves team and you're now trying to pivot trying to find your excitement whether you are in on some of these young players the young talent the unproven side of 100 thieves there is that other side of that coin and that's exactly what we saw come through for 100 thieves was some of that inexperience was some of these issues in the performance where it wasn't up to that level of that cloud nine series which seemed to be the peak it wasn't necessarily this is the, the swell for this 100 thieves team he hit the peak in cloud nine game and since then it has been a struggle and unfortunately exposed at this point in time when you're talking about the quality of teams and the intensity of these matches that you get at the world's playing stage. So the most egregious uh, part for them is, of course, just not being on the same page as a five-man unit, kind of going in one by one at times. The macro wasn't there. There's too many things to pick. But when you look individually, I know Quid had definitely some down games in uh, this run as a whole. But really it felt like he was their only win condition. It's not like you were getting many advantages from Sniper and Tomo uh, and Ayla in the bot lane. It really just felt like if Quid wasn't ahead, 100 Thieves weren't winning any games here. And if, I think that is a fair assessment of what you saw in 100 Thieves. And, uh, you know, part of that, I want to give a credit over to River because it felt like he in almost every single of these ones was not the main cause of what the problem was. There's a fire was, in all three kitchens. What, what's he supposed yeah, to do? Yeah, he, he's the main guy trying to plug all the holes in the ship and make sure that we're staying afloat in any of these matchups. Sniper, yes, I think there's a lot of positive to still talk about and to take away from this type of event and the experience and everything else like that. You don't got to look too far. And Masu, we were just talking about, you know, again, a rough uh, MSI type of situation for him, exposure on the international stage. And then... Some pretty good steps made throughout this summer split and where we feel about him as that individual, as that potential grows. That's something you can look at. And for Quid, this is another one where you're in that development, right? You got to be talking about that with a young player and realizing, again, 
this is that kind of first real taste exposure at this type of level that, hey, you might have leveled up. You might have gotten comfortable in the LCS. You might have proven yourself to stay into that top tier and that you are a good option. But now it's that next step. Now you are issued. Now you are knocked back down. Let's see how, how quickly you can pick yourself back up and what you look like at that. Yeah, I think even coming into this event, Sniper is getting the most leeway for this because number one, 17 international debut. And I think there's just, everyone's rooting for this kid. He's so likable. He has such the right mental approach to the game, even though if he definitely was tilted in some of these games that's understandable and you know as we head into this new 2025 era it's obviously going to be a huge question mark what this 100 thieves roster is but sniper and quid i feel like are the closest to be locked for this roster next year i feel pretty confident in that type of statement when you look at the potential that you have with sniper the type of player not only on the rift but the brand that he is going to be able to build for himself with that type of personality how he engages obviously of course online the different type of media aspects that is going to be a big part of it and for a team organization like 100 these that's checking a lot of boxes for me want to keep want to invest in that guy but as you said you know he was someone that was providing that type of angle or you know really the only type of winning driving force for this team at this event I think you can look at him as a safe lock for this team. The question for me is whether you continue to believe, continue to invest in this development and that there is an improvement, there is a higher level for him compared to trying to look at one of the other options that I think will be around and we all have this massive question mark for is going to be Mr. Jojo Kenna. That's a whole topic to discuss about when we get into rumors and off season and everything else, but it is going to be spicy when you're looking at one of those type of options, possibly on a budget redemption type of deal. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think the lasting impression for 100 Thieves from this world is from LCS fans and Cloud9 as a whole sitting there going, what if? Like, this is this is the team that's here instead of Cloud9. You've got to believe Cloud9 would have had more of a fight in them if they were in this spot. I think that's that's the worst angle out of all of this one, right? The, the, the most painful one to come through out of this is that you would have thought differently if maybe this 100 Thieves team, you know, goes out in a blaze of glory, a real tough full three-game set against PSG where they show you some of that fire, some of that skill that you saw in that series against Cloud9. They didn't. They go out with a whimper, a very sloppy, uh, uh, all-over-the-place, uh, you know, unchecked type of performance from the LCS to end this one out. That's where you have that disappointment. The proven players of Cloud9 on the international stage, I think that's where a lot of people have that what if. We're used to this type of performance uh, out of the LCS, but hey, cheer up, guys. Smiles up, because three out of the four teams at the very least advancing, there was a lot of highlights, a lot of things to feel very good about. We're going to hand out a little all-pro honor for some of the guys who really stood above and beyond in this playing stage. And you start, uh, honestly, on the bottom side of the map because where NA faltered, EU absolutely thrived. MDK didn't in, even need to drop a series to advance. And the two guys who absolutely stood out was that bot lane duo of Supa and Alvaro. Time and time again, these were the two guys who I feel like the bot lane has been the most suspect part of MDK throughout the year. But both of them stepped up in a huge way to help MD MDK advance. Oh, EU fans are going to love this one coming through from the uh, Mad Lions bottom lane. There were kind of two factors that you needed to see, that you had the questions with this Mad Lions team. Number one, El Yoya got to show up as that big dog that we have seen on the international stage come through with big performances and be a leader for this team. That had to come through, and you got that one. And the other question was going to be, well, El Yoya, if he's going, if he is that leader and he's got some good juices flowing, you got to have something else on this team to help you get across that finish line. Just like a 100 Thieves type of situation. If you didn't have quid, you had nothing to really get you over there. You had something in the tank if you were the Mad Lions, and that is that bottom lane duo. We're talking about both aspects of it. I think Supa as the ADC, as that marksman, as that damage was there, was reliable, made some impressive plays, and he is someone that we have talked about throughout the positive times of Mad Lions, when he is at his best, that is when they're finding that success on the Rift. And Alvaro, 
in lane, out of lane, he was making some pretty darn good setups for the rest of the team. Yeah, that's the most impressive part is straight up in the 2v2, this bot lane was going toe to toe with whether it was Betty or Woody, anyone they were matching up against. And then these engages out of Alvaro on the Alistair, on the Rel, not even just engages, but pickoffs. Obviously, the LeBlanc play where he instantly pops onto Maple the minute he jumps in. He had like three out of the five wins, I feel like, were game winning engages out of their support. You are thrilled to see that from this Mad Lion Squad bottom lane because, again, Things are gonna get real crazy as you step into this Swiss stage, an immediate matchup with BLG, and you got Bin laying down the trash talk, and it is a scary sight to behold. You gotta keep yourself level and understand, of course, well, even outside of that BLG matchup where Bin's giving you the, the already the death statement of 0-1, you're moving into that next matchup, and you gotta find yourself that rebound. I'm thinking, outside of Bin matchup, that top side, that interesting angle we always talk about with Merwin that is the last remaining question for this Mad Lions team I think you're not necessarily looking for anything special or expecting a craziness from Mr. Frescawi in the mid lane but you're talking about the leader in El Yoya and our big ones the bottom lane Supa and Alvaro and what they have risen to and there was another duo on the other side of the map that absolutely stood out we are accustomed to slow starts out of the VCS and GAM esports but they hit the ground running, never looked back, and that is because both Kiaya and Levi, the two-headed beast of the VCS, absolutely showed up. Shivana's going to be perma-banned against Gam, and Aurora should probably be perma-banned against them too. Which means that they both will be left up against FlyQuest. Is that yep. the only <laughs> way that I see it playing out? Yes, we are giving Gam the flowers at this type of point, which, hey, Shout out to the GAM CEO. My man just shows up in Berlin, signs up on a whim for the marathon, completes it. Meanwhile, GAM getting through into the Swiss stage. All things coming up GAM right now. Looking at that top side duo as we laid out Shivana. Big time scary pick. Got to get it knocked away from Mr. Levi. The type of a creativity that it allows for him and the type of pace and control in these team fights when he's always got that ultimate charge then ready to go and dive right in on your carries and start raining down fire that's a scary thing one of those things you cannot let happen if you are fly quest and then as well mr kiaya mr solo bolo up in that top side and the type of terror that he can bring to a team and a player with a pretty big target painted on his back by the rest of the community and whippo Yes, I am scared for that one as an LCS fan. Yeah, and I know they had probably the easiest schedule in the playing stage with SoftBank Hawks and R7, but they played who matched up against them and they dominated them. They don't only one of their four games even went north of 30 minutes that's how dominant uh, this top dog from the vcs was a little bit shakier than maybe we thought out of psg but i still to me no question maple was still the standout performer in the mid lane when you look at this play in stage a couple of the come from behind wins on akali leblanc the ari game that he uh, pulled out against mdk he was as advertised and it would have been as much as we're sad to see 100 Thieves go, it would have been way more sad to see Maple's career end losing to 100 Thieves. That's the angle we're taking. We did the international community a favor after you're all welcome. this time. Okay, we we can't end the story just here to 100 Thieves. Gotta get Maple into the Swiss stage. Yes, PSG Maple taking the honors for the mid lane in this all pro list. I think outside of two, maybe at the most, mistakes that you could really point out that weren't of the type of level that we know that he has already established himself at the most exciting thing about this for me and i'm sorry to maple because he had those wonderful performances that you've talked about but it really isn't about him this type of pick if he's performing like this on these type of champions have you heard about the mid laners that we've got in the swiss stage and the options that are going to be available for them and how nasty it can be Yes, sir, Re, sign me up for some of that. Yeah, again, the, the ramp up when you head into the main stage is now he's going against a Zeka who's in finals form who just had his way with Chovy in the LCK finals. Oh, 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 and is, oh, what is that? Is that EU caps? Oh, is that the, you're talking about Mr. Silas LeBlanc? From the Linkin Park music video? <laughs> yes, we got a lot of these guys and we got a lot of options 
available in the mid lane. Maple giving us a nice little sampling of it through the playing stage and showing some of that always eternal class that he has brought to the wrist. Rip. I think case in point, though, again, you look at this playing stage as a whole, that it is defined by the R7 win over 100 Thieves because all it takes is that one upset and then the bracket is completely shifted because you were then guaranteed either MDK or PSG matching up against the 100 Thieves. So it takes just one series and one of these top four teams that you expected to get through completely busted. It's, it's, it's like that classic Mario Party game, right? It's always that one person gets the, or the wild change of a star or something like that. Swap places on the board. There it is. Changes the whole situation. That is the consequence of one of these type of upsets. And you better bet your bottom dollar. I'm, I'm saying it. We're going to see one when we've got eight games to kick off the Swiss stage. Yeah, I think 100 Thieves got that. Bowser dice that said lose half your brain and then <laughs> the debuff across the whole squad couldn't bounce back from that one that's just how it happens in Mario Party it's a do or die but yeah we'll be back for a full preview of that main event with all your day one action but that is it today for League Unlock Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people thanks for hanging out and we will catch you on that flippity flip